there is a word from the Lord this morning. And if you would, I want you to turn your Bibles with me to the uh, book of Psalms, Psalm 116, verses 12 through 14. Old Testament reading, book of Psalms, Psalm of David, number 116, starting at verse 12, which will end at verse 14. And stand with me as we read the word of God. If you don't have your Bible, share with somebody who may be near you. Psalm 116, verses 12 through 14. Amen. When you're there? Amen. Amen. Psalm 116, verses 12 through 14. And it says, What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits towards me? I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord this morning. What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits towards me? That is the question that David is asking. It is actually a question we all could ask ourselves. What shall I render unto the Lord for all the benefits towards me? In other words, what can I give God for everything he has done for me? And when you ask that question, you know, if you start thinking, if you try to ponder that question, what can you give God in return for all the things he has done for you? You got to ask yourself that sometimes. You know, and I'm asking you this morning, has God done anything for anybody here this morning? Yes. Has God been good to anybody yes. here this morning? Yes. And so when you think about the goodness of the Lord God, then you start asking yourself, now what can I do for God? You know, and sometimes when God does something for you, sometimes even thank you doesn't seem like it's enough. You know. And, you know, we've all been in that situation in our lives where something good happens, somebody's done something good for us, and you try to search for the words to say thank you. You search for something to say. But whatever you do, it just doesn't seem like it's enough. And that's what my topic is for you this morning. It's never too much. Amen? Amen. Never too much. You know, I think about it. I think about what God has done for me. I think about how God has been good to me. And sometimes when I think and, and, and I stop and I think about it, it just doesn't seem like enough. No matter what I say, no matter what I do, it's never too much. It's never too much for the Lord. What shall I render to God? What do I have to give God? In other words, sometimes you've got to ask yourself, what is it that God needs? And you think about it, God doesn't need anything. Amen. He doesn't need anything you have. You know, I know a lot of times we say that, I'm going to give God this, I'm going to give God that. But the material things that you have in your life, you don't have enough to give God. But whatever you do, no matter what you say, no matter what you do, it's never too much. When you think about fortitude, you know, that means bravery. I'm brave enough to stand boldly before the throne of God. When you think about solitude. That's about being alone in your prayer. Enter in your closet, and when you close the door, pray unto the Lord. Give him prayer. You know, when you think about gratitude, you might say, Lord, I just can't thank you enough. When you think about latitude, latitude means you're kind of moving from one side to the other, but sometimes when you're moving closer to God, it's still never too much. When you think about attitude, I think about something David said. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. Amen? Yeah. Will, but whatever you render to God for all the benefits that he has given to you, it's never too much. It's never too much. You know, I will pay my vows to the Lord now in the presence of this people. My vow is really just justification and magnification of the thing that God has done in my life. Really, when you think about it, I vow to praise God. I vow to serve God. I vow to be obedient to God. And that should be everybody's testimony here this morning. I do believe I have some witnesses here this morning that know exactly what I'm talking about. It's never too much. God has all the resources that we need. Something Paul said that I remember and I like to think about it and I ponder on this thing that Paul said. Paul said, not that I, res that I speak with respect to want, for I have learned that whatever state that I'm in, to be content. 
I can be happy if I'm rich, and I can be happy if I'm poor. Amen? Because God has been good to me. I know how to be abased and I know how to be abound. Everywhere in all things I'm instructed, instructed to be full and hungry, both to be abound and to suffer need. But Paul said this, I know that I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Somebody praise God this morning. Amen. Now what David is doing, David is speaking from personal experience because this is his personal testimony. This is something that he's saying, you know, what shall I render God for all the benefit that he has given me? You know, and I know David is thinking about it, but David is not even giving us, as, giving us this as a command. What should we render to God? This is his testimony, you know. But let me tell you something. God has been good to me. That's all I can tell you. God has been better to me than I even know how to be to myself. Amen? Amen. But whatever you render to God is never too much. Never too much. Whatever you render to God, you know, and I, I remember one time I was preaching a sermon, and it was called Render Your Hearts to God. In other words, when you render your heart to God, you open your heart to the Lord God. You open your heart and you allow God to come in and work on the inside of you. And you know, I have, I have, I have two witnesses that are with us this morning. You one who did it already. You know, we were talking about that last week. That's one of the things that Brother Eric did. Eric, when you did it, when you became baptized, when you came in here, you gave your life, you rendered your heart to God. Amen. And Sister Tyra, who's with us this morning, you know, she's going to do the same thing. She's going to render her heart to God because she knows in her mind. Whatever she does for God is never too much. And you know, and, and let me just say this, and it's a personal testimony. You know, she shared with us this morning, and she was saying that, you know, I'm going to do this, but I wanted to visit with you all this morning. And so she got up early. She drove a long distance to get here, you know, and she's going to go another distance to get there. And so it's never too much, no matter what you do for God, it's never too much, amen? So don't you stop praising God, don't you stop worshiping God, don't you stop believing in God, don't you stop trusting God, don't you stop counting on God. You keep on trusting in God. You keep walking in the faith, amen? Somebody praise God this morning. God has a special blessing for your life, amen? But Paul said, I'm here to tell you this morning that you know, I can encourage you with these words that Paul said. He said that eyes it have not seen, nor ears heard, nor has it entered into the hearts of man the things which God has prepared for those who love the Lord. Does anybody here love the Lord? Anybody in here love the Lord? Amen. God has revealed to us by his spirit, for the, he searches the spirit, the spirit searches all things, the deep things of God. In other words, what God has for you hasn't even been revealed yet. What God has for you hasn't been revealed yet. You know, you might think, well, God's been good to me, but guess what? God is not finished with you. Amen. Amen. God still Amen. has a lot for you. Amen. Don't you, don't you, don't you give up? Don't you give in and don't you give out? God is not finished with you. We are all works in progress. Amen. But we got to keep on trusting in the Lord. Amen. And you stand with God no matter what. No matter what the devil tried, no matter what the devil does, no matter what the devil said, you stand with the Lord. You know? And I'm, I'm, I'm reading something to you that, that, that John said in the book of Revelation. He said it in 317. He said that God says, I know that works. You know, you need the hot code. And God, would, you know, he was saying that to some people who don't know where they are with the Lord. You know, some people don't know if they're on the, you know, they're straddling the fence. You can't straddle the fence with God. When you give your life to Jesus, give it completely. Amen. Amen. You, you know, you can't ride on the train with one foot on the train and one foot on the tracks. Amen. That can be dangerous. Amen. That can be quite painful. Amen. <laughs> but you got to give your heart to God. Because cause, cause John said that. You know, God said that, that because you are lukewarm, neither hot or cold, I will spew you out of my mouth. That's what the word says. Amen. You got to be with God or you either against God. And that's what Jesus said. Jesus said, he that is not with me is against me. Now, you notice that he didn't say he either with me or you're for me. You know, uh, you're for me or you're against me. He said that it, 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 you are with me or you are against me. You know, but the Bible says that every good thing, every miracle Jesus did was by the power of the Holy Spirit. Everything Jesus did was by the power of God's Holy Spirit. So whenever there's a miracle happening, it happens because of God's Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is incredibly holy. That's why I tell you, don't play around with the Holy Spirit. As a matter of fact, when Jesus was healing people, 
There were some people who stood around him and criticized him for what he was doing. But let me tell you what's dangerous about criticizing the Holy Spirit. Jesus told them, you can speak against me. You can say some things against me. He said, but whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man, it can be forgiven. You can speak against Jesus and you can be forgiven of that. But he said, whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it shall not be forgiven of him. Not in this life, but a life to come. So that's the reason why you got to be very careful. So when you give your heart to God, when you decide that you're going to follow Jesus Christ, when you start believing in God with the power of your spirit, with the power and the sincereness of your heart, you trust God and let the spirit use you. They were singing that in the, in the service this morning. Use me in thy service. Let God use you. Let God guide your steps. Amen. It's time for us to stand with God. It's time for us to praise God. It's time for us to believe in God. And it's time for us to thank God. Somebody praise God this morning. In the book of Psalms, Psalm 139, David said, Search me, Lord, O God. Know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. But if there be any wicked ways in me, he said, lead me into the ways of everlasting life. Think about that for a minute. Whatever gratitude I have for God, it's just never enough. And it's never too much. Whatever I render to God is never too much. Don't go around thinking you've done enough for God. And there's a lot of people who think that, you know. Well, I prayed and that's good enough. Not enough. I went to church. On Christmas, <laughs> not enough. And guess what? We got Easter services, resurrection services coming up. That's when the churches are all filled with people. Amen. Because they think that's enough. It's never too much. Serve God every opportunity that you have, right? And you can serve God anywhere you are. You can be walking down the street talking. Stop praising God. You can be driving in your car. Stop praising God. You can be on your bike exercising. Stop praising God. Amen. It's never too much. You can never give God too much praise. You can never give God too much worship. Amen? But you got to allow God to use you and work in your life. You know? James said it in 117, every good gift, every perfect gift is from above, comes down from the Father of life. So that's the reason why I can say thank you, Lord. Amen? What can I give God in return for being so good to me? He gave me breath. You know, he gives me strength. He gives me good health. He gives me family. He gives me friends. He gives me every single thing I need. You know, and one of the things that uh, I, I, I think about it when we're in the church, they got some devils out there that they just can't stand to hear anybody praising God. But you praise God wherever you are, anytime you feel like it. Amen. And don't let nobody talk you out of worship. Don't let nobody talk you out of praise, you know. And you can't give God enough. No matter what it is, you try to, try to give God, you know. One of the things that get people sometimes running in the wrong direction and thinking about the wrong things is when we start talking about it. And y'all notice that every time I ask about giving unto the Lord, I ask you to give your best gifts to the Lord, right? And I'm not asking you to do nothing that you can't do. Because let me tell you something. They got some folk, and I tell you this all the time. If you don't have a nickel in your pocket, don't ever let that be a reason to not come to church. Amen? I don't want anybody to ever feel like that. You know, I, I just don't go to church because I don't have anything to give. Give your prayers. Give your service. Give your honor to God. Amen? Because if you don't have, God is a way maker. Amen? He can make a way out of nowhere. Amen? And God can make sure that you have. And guess what? If you trust him, He'll allow you to give abundantly. Amen. And the reason why I'm saying that, we talk about giving, you know, and that messes up somebody's mind sometimes. Well, the preacher, he always talking about money. That's all them preachers want is money. You know, that's all they talk about is money. Let me tell you something. You ain't got enough money in the world to give God. Amen. And God don't want your money. Amen. You know, because there's nothing in heaven that your money can pay for. You, God don't need your money. Uh, to keep the lights on in heaven or nothing like that, amen? God is not short on his rent, amen? That he needs your money, right? God is not hurt for anything, you know, he lost his job, so he needs you to give him some money. That's not what it's about. Amen. Everything you have, God made it possible for you to have it. Thank you, Lord. 
So when you ask to give, all God is trying to do is creating you is a giving spirit. It is better to give than to receive. Amen. And so when you start giving, you'll start getting. Let me say that again. When you start giving, you'll start getting. Amen. Come on, praise God. When you learn how to really and truly give, watch how God starts blessing you. Amen. Because whatever you give is never too much. And you'll find that God is going to start blessing you every which way and things just start happening in your life. And guess what? You can praise and you can tide your way out of a situation. Amen. But here's something David said. I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. You know. And he said that because that's his personal testimony. Fill my cup, Lord. You know, that's what we're here this morning to do. We're going to partake in the holy uh, 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 sacrament of communion. The ordinance of communion this morning is what we do, you know. And the Bible says that Jesus took the cup after he had given thanks, right? And he said, this is my blood which is shed for the remission of sins, you know. And, and David's testimony was prophetic when you think about it. He said that I will take the cup of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. When we take the cup of salvation this morning, it's a special cup. You know, it, 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 it's, it's a cup of salvation. It's no ordinary cup. When we talk about that, it's not a paper cup. That's not strong enough. You know, it's not a disposable cup because a disposable cup doesn't last. We're taking a uh, part in the cup of salvation with it's everlasting. It's the everlasting cup. What we're trying to do is find our way to heaven. Amen. And what we want is eternal life with God. And when we get eternal life with God, then we can just praise God all day long. We don't have to worry about anything happening in the earth. No more pain. No more agony. No more sickness. No more despair. We're just praising God all the day long. Somebody pray, praise God this morning. All right, we're going to say this, y'all, like I tell you. We're going to say this morning, this morning, and we got to get out of here. The Bible says, as David was saying, What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits towards me? For whatever God has done for me, I'm trying to think of what can I do in return for God? How can I tell God, thank you? What do I have that I can give God? But whatever it is you do, whatever it is that you say, it's never too much. You know, one night, uh, Jesus is sitting with his disciples, and on that night, he was betrayed. He was denied. But the Bible says he took the cup of salvation and he gave thanks. So what can I give Jesus in return? The best thing I can do is receive him for the thing that he has done for me. Take the cup of salvation and call on the holy name of God. Salvation is in the name of Jesus. All you have to do is receive it. I'm here to tell somebody this morning, when you call on the holy name of Jesus, you're drinking from the cup that's filled with love. You're drinking from the cup that's filled with mercy. You're drinking from a cup that's filled with healing. You're drinking from a cup that's filled with deliverance. You're drinking from a cup that's filled with peace. You're drinking from a cup that's filled with joy. You're drinking from a cup that's filled with living water. Jesus is the living water. Spring it up from a well that provides eternal life with God. What shall I render unto the Lord for all he has done, for all his benefits towards me? Whatever I render, it's never too much. In the words of the psalmist, I'm here to tell somebody this morning, how can I say thanks for all the things you have done for me? Things so undeserved, yet you give to prove your love for me. But I'm here to say that a million voices of, an, of the voices of a million angels could not express my gratitude because all that I am and all that I hope to be, I owe it all to thee. With his blood, I am saved. With his blood, I am raised. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Somebody shout glory. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody give God praise. Somebody thank God this morning. Somebody thank God for eternal salvation with his
King. Somebody praise God this morning. Whatever I render to God is never too much. Never too much. The most prophetic word that I believe in my heart and in my mind, you find in the book of Isaiah. 61.1 Isaiah said The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken heart. He has sent me to preach deliverance to the captive, the recovery of the sight to the blind, and to set liberty to them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. When Isaiah said that in 61 1, he was speaking prophet, prophecy of which Jesus would walk right into. Because Isaiah wasn't preaching that about himself, he was preaching that about Jesus Christ. In the book of Luke, chapter 4, Luke walked into the synagogue. And then he walked into the synagogue, I mean, sorry, Jesus walked into the synagogue. And they gave him the book of Isaiah. He read the same scripture. He was preaching. He was teaching all about the prophetic word that Isaiah had spoken. It was all about Jesus. And I'm here to tell you this morning, it's all about Jesus. And we just want to thank God for Jesus. We want to thank God for the things that he has done in our life. And God is not finished with you yet. Nobody knows their own path. Nobody knows the path that God has laid out for them. But if you trust in the Lord, he will lead you. Because Jesus said, the Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not walk. He maketh me lie down in the green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. So if you want your soul to be restored this morning, all we got to do right now is pray to the Lord. In this sanctuary, or if you're watching me right now on Facebook, YouTube, or at our website, GentileGreaterHarvest.com, all we want to do is tell God how much we love Him. And we do that through our prayers. So let's open our hearts and our minds to the Lord this month, this morning. Give Him praise, give Him honor, give Him glory, and more than that, give Him thanks. What shall we render unto God for the goodness that He has given us in our lives? We render our prayers of thanksgiving this morning. So let us pray right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Father, we thank you for your love, your kindness, and your mercy. And I pray that every single person that hears my voice, whether they're with me right now in the sanctuary or they're listening to me, listening to me, Father, but however they hear me, God, I pray your blessings upon their lives. I pray that you will bring peace, healing, deliverance, and prosperity into their lives. And not only will you bless them, Father, but that you will bless the families that they represent. Touch every man, woman, boy, girl on the face of this earth, regardless of race, creed, color, ethnic origins, or geographical location. God, help to make us one. Help us to come to know you, worship you, praise you as the one and only true and living God, Father. And I pray that every single soul will be blessed, God, from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet, God. Bring about a healing on their mind, their body, their soul, and their spirit, Father. We pray and ask these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Somebody give God some praise this morning.